to you, Matty Johns. Good morning, Matty White. Yes, very, very interesting. It's, uh, <laughs> my God, this, this last round, four or five really big games, significant games. And uh, oh, it's really, really exciting. And of course, the Knights yesterday, man, eight in a row, first time since 2001. Uh, they just keep marching forward. Six all at half time. Great second half performance. Yeah, you, you just wonder how far they can go. There are uh, a few what ifs around that as well. We'll do our snap judgments, of course, and go through every single match from round 26. Plus, Maddie, the key lineups for round 27 because the ramifications are mm. quite extraordinary. And, and weirdly enough, it's kind of like when we discuss coaches, everything comes back in some weird way to Wayne Bennett. When we discuss the top eight ramifications at the moment, everything's coming back to the Broncos because the flow-on effect is quite dramatic. Yeah, it, no, it is, Matty. And, and the big thing in this last round is going to be, well, what's going to be really interesting is just how, how teams manage this last round. I mean, let's take, for instance, Penrith Panthers. So Friday night, uh, um, uh, for Thursday night, uh, the Broncos can wrap up the minor premiership, knocking over the, yeah. the Melbourne Storm. Now, if they do that, you know, what then do Penrith do on the Sunday? Well, my guess is they may rest five or six guys against the Cowboys, which then gives the Cowboys a boost. Uh, meanwhile, you've got the Raiders up against the Sharks. They're in that bottom half of the eight, and the Raiders got a really bad points differential. They lose that game. They can drop out of the eight completely. And so it's... Uh, I can't wait for it. It's going to be a uh, it's going to be a great round of football, and then of course at the very top you got you got sides like the Storm and the and the Warriors. They're sitting there going, okay, who are we going to have first week? Is it going to be the Broncos? Is it going to be the Panthers? And on top of all those things, Matty, we've got we've got the injuries. You know, Jerome Luai, you know, Jerome Hughes with a knee injury, um, Manu hamstring, Luke Madcalf hamstring at the Warriors. Intriguing. And then, of course, on top of that, we've got the suspensions as well. So we'll pick our way through that. And the other part of this equation too, Matty, is you look at the Broncos, for instance, and you look at the Warriors, two teams that you just mentioned there. So Panthers been there and done that before. Um, Warriors this time last year were in a completely different boat. So too with the Broncos. Storm have been there and done it before. Knights are on the tear. So it starts to lead to questions of there's going to be a huge reset after this yes. final round, isn't there? And the, yep. normally with a reset comes a different way of thinking. Some are going to adjust, adjust to finals a bit differently. Some might lose their you-know-what and go, ah, this is a totally different ball game. Yeah, it's really interesting, Matty. Uh, we've had, I've had a couple of examples where I've been in, in seasons um, where uh, an example in 1995, we won the first nine straight. And then we hit the wall at the back end. And I think we lost our last six. And we're like, oh, mate, this is like... But suddenly the finals hit. And when the finals hit, you know, you get up, you go to training, it's a little warmer. It's just a different feel. And it just felt like a new competition started. We had a great run through the finals and almost made the grand final. Vice versa. You know, we've, we've been on a roll at the Knights, you know, and, and tearing through sides. But we hit the finals. And for whatever reason, you know, we just... It just didn't happen. You know, we hit the wall. Uh, so it's yeah, you know, it's really interesting. Momentum, <clears throat> momentum is everything. This is why it's intriguing in and around Newcastle, is that seemingly out of nowhere, Newcastle have found this incredible form, the best form they've been, you know, best I've seen them play for you know, a couple of decades. And you've got Caelan Ponga, you know, an incredible talent playing the best football of his career. Well, okay, how far can Newcastle go? That's you know, this is what this is what is starting to happen. Um, and as I said before, Matty, the, the injury stuff, you know, like I look at the Melbourne Storm a little bit, right? And they're a side that, you know, always get up for the finals. But I'm looking at the Storm, Matty, and there's some of their key players looking tired. Jerome Hughes, as I said before, you know, he's got a knee injury. Harry Grant's looking really tired. They rested him, you know, brought him off the bench on the weekend. So it's very, very interesting seeing experience versus momentum and so on and so forth. What do you reckon then is most important, especially for those that are about to face the kind of different scenario that they haven't been in for a while? Is it is it the art of the coaches and how they get them back up again and, and keep them essentially not afraid of football's final and, and playing what they did to get there? Is it the superstars that they'll rely on? 
Is it injuries? Is it a mix of all? Or is there somebody else at a club, Matty, that is key to is key to changing gears for a finals run? Well, as far as changing gears, Matty, like we, I just spoke about the Melbourne Storm. Every, every side's got their X factor that's coming back, or you know, or, or player who's starting to emerge. For the Melbourne Storm, it's Ryan Pappenhausen. He had a taste of it on, on the weekend. You can see that he was pretty ga he was gassed early. But he'll play again this week, and it'll be interesting to see how Craig Bellamy uses him. Meanwhile, at the Roosters, you've got Sam Walker. You know, now, if the Roosters can beat the Rabbitohs and then sneak into the, have results go their way and sneak into the eight, but boy, I tell you what, they're going to, uh, mate, they're, they're capable of going on a run. As a, look, at, you know, after the whole week of controversy, so is South Sydney. South Sydney. Yeah. They can get in there. They, they can make, Latrell Mitchell comes back to that football side, he can turn the competition on its head but coaching is so ex it is just so important Matty like not just not not so much tactically because you've got your principles and your structure and all that s stuff in place it's just getting your team to either elevate or hold their nerve so pressure goes in a different way to Kevy Walters, to uh, Andrew Webster over there at the Warriors, to Adam O'Brien at the Newcastle Knights, and that's just three out of the current top eight at the moment. I said off the top, we're playing the great game of what if. I mean, there are so many what ifs, and we'll get to all those permutations a little bit later, but a couple of left field what ifs. What if we just went stuff it and just mic'd up Ricky Stewart and Craig Bellamy for the entirety of a match? And we and we got over this Monday morning, let's, let's decipher whether Ricky's in the right or wrong or whether he should swear at press conference. Do you reckon it's time we just went, what if we went all in, mate, and listened to everything? <laughs> well, it, Matty, it would, you'd have to have two parallel channels. You'd have, uh, you'd have, uh, you'd have Fox the Sports. The After Dark channel. <laughs> Fox League, and then you'd have, uh, yeah, Fox League X, which you could switch <laughs> over, press the red button, and away you go. But uh, it'd be interesting. I, you know, Matty, I said about coaching being really important, right? Now, now, Ricky Stewart, um, you know, they had some tough calls go against him. But that, what Ricky's really good at, Matty, is building that siege mentality right up mm. amongst his side. They're, they were about, they're about to go in against this uh, shark side and then hopefully into the finals for him. And Ricky, this, you know, why, 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 you know, why will we? Why is it always us get penalised like this? Why is it us? Why are they against us? We're hearing at the press conference. Now this. That, this is what he's doing with his football side. He's building a siege mentality. Boys, they don't want us in the finals. Boys, nobody rates us. All that stuff, he's just poking his own team through the media. Yeah, and I, I always wonder, you know, post-press conference, just how much Ricky takes that back into the dressing room and, and, and lets them know, or he waits for them to find out the next day or that night when they sit and read it. Here's another what if for you. What if... What if Newcastle go all the way? What if they go all the way again? What happens on the streets of Newcastle on the Monday morning yeah. after the grand final? Is it Has it changed so much, Matty, since the glory days that they're all drinking craft beer at, and they wait until, you know, a, a reasonable time in the day? Or is it is it back to the old... <laughs> is it back to the old days of people standing out the front of other people's houses and singing yeah. silver chair songs at 6 a.m.? Well, I think it would be the latter. Yes, it would be. It would be back on again. And you, if, as I said, Matty, when you just, if they make a run through the finals, well, you only have to see the last two weeks of what would happen. You know, full house. Um, and it's, it's, it's so great for the people up there. Like, you know, they, they've had, it's been a really difficult uh, couple of decades. It's been a really difficult couple of decades. Uh, you know, the club has lost its way so many times. There's been so many false dawns. But, um, oh, mate, they're flying at the moment. But, Matty, like, it, it be, you know, I, I've got to remain I've got to remain guarded here. I mean, you, you don't want to jinx the side. I mean, there we are, like, you know, last night. We're sitting at the back of the green room uh, at Fox Sports about to do the show. There's myself, Fletch and Heine, and you know, you've got Scotty Sorensen and Mitch Kenny from, from the Panthers. And we're talking, we're talking about Caelan Pong, and we're going, wow, unbelievable, look at this. All of a sudden, Jesse Ramium hits him with a, with an outside-in tackle. Caelan goes down with a shoulder. Now, he had scans today, and look, I don't think he's in any doubt of missing football, but that's how quickly things can just turn on its head, you know, with a simple, with a simple tackle. Um, but 
it's it's just it, Maddie. Look, it's great for the community up there. It's it's brilliant. And as I said before, two weeks in a row, full house, very exciting. Uh, the worry for me in that tackle, mate, I'm sure a lot of people did it too, was was a concussion, a possible concussion out of that because it wasn't just the impact on the shoulder but the way that Kalen's head rattled around. Yeah. Um, uh, and obviously there was no Category 1 and all that kind of stuff, but you just you, you wonder so much right now uh, about the flow-on effect and that could have long-term ramifications, like you say. Let's hope it doesn't, yeah. and at the moment it doesn't appear as though well, there is, but Adam O'Brien has a bit of a luxury now, mate, doesn't he? He can, he, he can afford to rest, Kalen. Yes, uh, he can, but you know what, Matty? I, I wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be resting. If I was Newcastle, keep winning. Keep the momentum. Don't, don't you know, don't start to rest players and risk popping the balloon by having a bit of a shock loss. I mean, this can, this last game for Newcastle against the Dragons is going to be a really tricky one. It's a tough place to win. Newcastle historically struggled to win at that ground uh, at, at Cogra. Uh, and, mate, they're playing some good football. Um, the Dragons. The last few weeks have been very good and unlucky not to, not to win the games. They fought really hard over in New Zealand, made the Warriors, uh, you know, break their back to win the game. But, mate, uh, yeah, it's tricky. You don't want to rest blokes when you're on a roll. Don't want to rest blokes and break the momentum. Just keep, just keep winning. Mm. Keep it going, keep it going. They've got the Dragons, as you say. That's on Saturday night. We're getting news from from uh, across the ditch, mate, at SENZ that Warriors captain Tohu Harris won't play this weekend against the Dolphins. He's got a back injury, and there are fears that he also won't be ready for the finals. Well, that's a, that's a, that would be a big blow because Tohu um, is a great leader. He gives them. He's got a lot of experience, but apart from that, mate, he's playing great football, Matty. He's given them a lot of you know these very clever ball playing through that middle of the field. So that would be that's just another example. You know, think Warriors flying, everything's going great. You know, haven't been getting a lot of injuries, and suddenly you got Tohu Harris and Luke Metcalf. Just how quickly things can turn. Jared Wairia Hargreaves, mate, um, faces a, a minimum when you put the two charges together. Grade two dangerous contact, grade one striking charge of six matches. So that will yeah. play out. Obviously, they've got until midday today to decide which way they're going to go. But we're talking about the dangerous contact on Api Corisau, yeah. um and then the headbutt on Stefano. It, it leads to that question of, of liability because he's a fine, um, you know, fine line player and every team has them, or leader. Which one do you want to be, especially at this time of the of the premiership? Oh, man, I, I, I don't know what Jared was thinking there. You know, the, the Appy, you know, to come, to race in, hit Appy outside in in that fashion with that swinging arm, it was just, you know, I mean, you're a week from the finals. The, the side has just started to pick up and start to play to their potential. And, you know, you've got a game up against the South Sydney Rabbitohs coming up next Friday where you need your enforcer. You need Jared there. It was just a, it was a brain snap that you would expect from a young player, not a player of Jared's experience. Yeah, exactly. So that one will play out today. We'll have a good look at the Broncos uh, after the break because they are on the cusp of their first minor premiership in 23 years and flow on effect of what they do against the storm but a good uh, a good insight i got a really good insight into somebody you'd know lee breers i had a chat with him last week maddie and it was quite interesting to have that chat but the final what if as we start this monday morning so what if the broncos go all the way mate what if brisbane yeah. go all the way does anastasia, anastasia palaszczuk do a statue of reese walsh's <laughs> eyebrows outside sunk <laughs> what's the what if there Oh boy, yeah. Well, they've, I was up at uh, Brisbane for a couple of days. Uh, yeah. We had a fundraiser up there, and oh, it's a buzz, Brisbane, with what's going on at the Broncos. It's like going back to the nineties again, where you know you, you jump off the plane at the airport, all everyone wants to talk about are the Broncos. It's really good stuff, and uh, and Walsh, mate, his images, mate, every, everywhere across Brisbane. Rightfully so. Fletch was saying last night, it's really funny what a play like Reese Walsh does for the game and like Andrew Eddinghausen back in the day. Like yeah. Fletch, Brian Fletcher said, he said, my daughters and her friends aren't really into rugby league, but when the Broncos play, they all sit around and watch because of Reese Walsh. Superstars. Superstar, yeah. right? And he's, and he's having one of those seasons he could certainly be the the catalyst to take them all the way let's see how that goes oh four five seven seven three six seven three six is the text line number 
or you can give us a call this morning on the roundup, 1300 01 1170. We'll take a look at more key players to decide the finals run. The Warriors continue to be the hottest ticket in town, but their skipper's in doubt for the finals. Latrell Mitchell, that's been an interesting and fascinating and at some stages disturbing story. Coach of the year, so it's getting down to the nitty gritty. We have to find out uh, who could it be now. And Ricky, of course, in the art of deflection. Ryan Pappenhausen is back and we'll also reflect on the life and career of Dr. Merv Cross. We'll do all that still to come right here on the Roundup on this Monday morning on your home of sport, SEN. 25 past nine. Welcome back to the program. 0457 736 736 is the number or 1300 01 1170 is that open line number. Uh, the passing of legendary surgeon Dr. Merv Cross, Matty, um, has obviously generated a lot of talk. There's, there's virtually and, and quite literally um, rarely a player that goes through the rugby league system who isn't touched in some way, shape or form by Dr. Merv yeah. Cross. Yes, uh a name just synonymous, uh, synonymous with Australian sport, particularly rugby league, and uh, just a super guy, Merv, and you know, revolutionary. Um, yeah, he was so good at uh, as far as a knee specialist that he went over there and, and taught the Yanks how to do ACLs. Uh, ACL injuries, of course, Matty, once upon a time when you did an ACL, it was career basically over, or you would never ever get back to what you were, but you know, Merv changed all that. Um, he and he had guys, protégés like Leo Pincheski, who were mate, weren't not just great surgeons, not just great Australian surgeons. They, they were the, they were the best in the world. So it's a huge loss. Yeah, absolutely. He was uh, 82 years of age. Our thoughts with the families of Merv Cross. Um, speaking of injuries and and returning from those kind of injuries, Ryan Pappenhausen. So it was 400 and something odd days, but yeah. he comes back in. Um, was plying his trade in the Queensland Cup there and and doing very well. Talk about timing, hey? Talk about timing yeah. for Paps back at the Storm. And uh, got the big cheer there when he ran on the field. Like yeah, it was it, it was really good, Matty. Um, well, it was fantastic because of the fact that when it first happened, that injury, you know, we, myself and uh, Andrew Webster, uh, of course, Andrew Webster, the journal, not the Warriors coach, where we were discussing it. And he said that he spoke to a couple of knee specialists and they were the belief that he would never play again. But here he is. He, he's back and great for Melbourne. It would be interesting how Craig Bellamy uses him. I don't think he, I don't think he will play fullback this season. My guess is I think he will come off the bench and continue to sort of give punch through that middle as a, as a light, loose forward, as he did when he sort of first started to have impact at NRL level. Uh, I think that's how they'll use him. I just don't think he's got enough Ks under his belt, Matty, to play fullback in the final series. And mentally, too, to overcome that kind of injury that, that could have been career-ending and come back into the fray of NRL right in time for finals footy has been extraordinary. Let's have a listen to Ryan Pappenhausen speaking to Fox Sports after the match. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I can't believe the crowd, honestly. I, I come to watch a few of the Matildas games here, and that was loud, but that, that was outstanding. Um, yeah, massive, massive thank you to everyone who came out today. It was a um, pretty tight contest there for a long time, and I went on and had to do my job, and um, yeah, it's just great to be back. It's a good feeling. Did you think this day would come? Um, I did, but I had its setbacks with it, so um, as I got closer towards it, it got further away, and um, I just had to hang in there, and it's definitely worth it, I'll tell you that much. It's um, yeah, all those dark days that you have. Just run back out here in Amy Park and with a team like this, um, I'm just lucky to be picked and yeah, lucky I'm back to be playing. Fantastic. Well done, eh? Yeah, really, yeah, really good. And like you said, he kept having uh, setbacks. I'm trying to think of the American, uh, the American guy they went over and see a little bit, Bill Knowles. Bill um, Knowles, yeah. When he, yeah he, he, earlier in the season, perhaps got out in the training field and, and, and broke down a couple of times. And uh, uh, Bill Knowles had told him that he kept having to get strength tests. And he said, only when you've got 90% uh, strength in that injured leg compared to the, the good leg, can you start to run. And it took, it, look, it took a long time. Uh, I know that Melbourne was sort of getting frustrated, as was Paps, but yeah, it's great to have him back. It's uh, fantastic for the game. And as I said before, like in Melbourne, you know, he's become a, a big name in Melbourne, you know, which is... It's really, really important for the game down there. Big crowd turned out. Big cheer for him.